Foam leveling videos make it look simple. You drill a few holes, inject the foam, and that slab rises back into place like nothing ever happened. But if you've ever asked, does it really work like that? You're beginning to ask the right questions because foam can absolutely fix sunken concrete, but it can also leave hidden voids, overlifted slabs, and future problems that aren't easy or cheap to undo. Ah! If you're considering foam leveling or maybe already got a quote for it, this video is gonna help you understand how foam leveling works, where it makes sense, where it tends to struggle, and how to tell if it's the right approach for your slab. Let's start with what foam actually is and what it does under the surface. Foam leveling, also often called polyjacking, follows a three-step process. Small holes, usually around 5 eighths of an inch, are drilled into the sunken concrete. A two-part polyurethane foam is injected through those holes, that foam undergoes a chemical reaction where it expands and lifts the slab back into place. And once that slab is level, the holes are patched and the surface is ready to use, often in the same day. It's clean, fast, and efficient, and that's why it's become such a popular option. Foam has some unique advantages that make it ideal in certain cases, like the speed. In most jobs, the surface is usable within an hour, and the holes are a little smaller than some of the other methods, which makes patching a little bit more discreet especially on some of those decorative or stamped concrete surfaces. In addition to all of those pros, it's a clean contained process with minimal dust and other disruptions. So if your concrete issue is in a hard to reach area or you're working around fragile finishes, foam might be the most practical choice, but again, it is not perfect. And it's also not a one size fits all solution. There are a few limitations that are important to understand before using foam or asking a professional to use it for you. Foam expands in place, but it doesn't always fill the entire space even. Instead, it can pancake, which is stacking in small layers, leaving unsupported gaps beneath the slab. Foam can be a little unpredictable because it continues expanding after the injection stops. In some cases, that chemical reaction can cause slabs to lift higher than intended, and there's not really an easy way to correct that. Along with that chemical reaction, foam generates heat as it cures. So injecting large amounts too quickly can actually lead to more internal damage, weakening its structure. None of these issues make foam a bad method. They just mean it needs to be used carefully in the right situations with the right expectations. If the work area is indoors or in a hard to reach space, you need a fast turnaround. Those are all pretty good reasons to get foam leveling. But if your slab has large or deep voids, you really wanna have more control over the lift. Materials like stone slurry grout or traditional mud jacking may actually be a better long-term option for that reason. So if you're comparing quotes already or just trying to figure out which leveling method fits your situation, here's what you should take away. Foam can work, but it works best when the conditions match the method. In general, if you're still unsure, you can always request a free onside estimate from your local A1 team. But if you wanna see how foam compares side by side with stone slurry and mud jacking, check out this video right here. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you around. Thanks for watching.